This video, sponsored by, Envato Elements. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. So let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I am calling it all as intro. For this tutorial, I'm using the 1920 by 854 pixels resolution to make it widescreen. Also, I am keeping the frame rate of 24 to get the cinematic look. And then hit OK. Now the first step is to import the background file into your project. You can download all files from the link in the description. Place it onto the timeline, and let's adjust the scale value of it. I'm keeping the scale value of 55%. Let's add our logo now. I am importing the PSD file of logo. Whenever you upload a PSD file into After Effects, it will show you this option. Make sure to choose Import Kind, to Composition and check this editable layer styles option. Hit OK, and now I need to make my logo a little smaller. So open scale, and then change the scale value to 50%. And this is how it looks. Now we are going to animate the logo. So double click on the logo composition, and here you will find the text, as well as the line layer. I have put them on a separate layer, so that we can animate them easily. Select the line layer, then go to the tools, and select the pen tool. Now carefully draw a mask line here. Let's keep this size. We will make a mask on this line as well. But we don't need a single mask on this shape. We need a separate mask for both lines. We can do this very easily. Let's undo first, then select the Move tool, and click on the screen. Again select Pen tool by pressing G on your keyboard, and start creating the mask. Now we have two masks, without continuity. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the stroke. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the paint style to reveal original image and then increase the brush size value by 15. Now I can only see the top layer. So make sure to click on this all mask option, and uncheck this stroke sequentially. Perfect, we will use the end for animating the stroke. But the thing is, I don't want this stroke to animate from this side. I want the animation to follow from the other side. We can fix it very easily. Just select this anchor point, and then right click on it, go to the mask and shape path, and choose set the first vertex. Now the stroke will move from this vertex point. Cool. Let's animate now. Make sure to change the end value to 0%, then go to around 1 second position, and add a keyframe on the end. Then go to around 12 frames forward, and change the end value to 100%. And it will start animating right away. Not bad. Now, press U to reveal all keyframes. Select both keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and select Easy Ease. Now open graph editor, in case your graph does not look like this, then right click here, and choose Edit Speed Graph. Now change the curves to something like this. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how the lines look now. Fit it 100%. Before moving to the next step, let's take a look at today's sponsor. Design video products faster, with Envato Elements. Get unlimited download, After Effects template, stock footage, fonts, music files, web templates, and more. Visit the Envato Elements. Check the first link in the description. 
Go to the main composition, and let's add some texture to our logo. Select the logo layer, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the gradient wipe. Place it onto the layer, and then we are going to use a texture layer for applying texture to the logo. Right now we have this metal texture layer background, and it won't look as good as the texture on the logo. Trust me, I have tried it. You're goddamn right. So let's import one more texture layer into the project, and place it below all layers. Let's hide this layer, because we don't need to see it. Again select the logo layer, and change the gradient layer to the metal texture background. Now increase the transition completion value, so that you can see the texture on the logo layer. Cool. Let's make some blood splatter effect. Select the logo layer, and make a duplicate of it. Then select the top logo layer, and call it blood. <laughs> then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fill effect. Apply it right above the gradient wipe layer, and then change the gradient wipe transition completion value to a higher number. Let's keep the value around 80%. Right now, the texture is looking like a cracked wall, not like the splatter. So, simply change the gradient placement to tile gradient, and it will give us this nice looking texture. Let's change the transition softness value to 10%. And this is how it looks now. Fit it 100%, and now we are moving to the next step. Import this brush file into your project, and then apply the same fill color on it. I'm using the default red color for it. Let's change the scale value to the smaller one, and place it right here. Now open rotation, and change the rotation value to around negative 25 degrees. Not bad. Let's add some animation to it, go to the effects and the presets and search for the linear wipe effect. Place it onto the layer, then go to the duration where you want to add the animation. I'm going to add the animation at around 2 second. Now we will use the transition completion value for animating it. But as you can see, the transition angle is wrong, we need to change the wipe angle to negative 90 degrees, and it will work fine. Let's keep the transition completion value to 100%, and increase the feather value to 25%. Now add a keyframe on the transition completion. Then go to around 5 frames forward, and change the transition completion value to 0%. Check the animation, and this is how it looks. I think it is looking a bit slow. Press U to reveal all keyframes, and bring the end keyframe closer, to increase the speed of this animation. And this is how it looks. Much better. Now make a duplicate of this brush layer, and place it right here. Now I'm going to change the fill color to white, as we have seen in the original title. Also, place it right below the logo layer, and place it a few frames to the right. I'm also increasing the size value to 50%, so that it will look different from the first one. Now I just need to do one thing. Select the brush layer, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the levels. Place it onto the layer, and then change the channels to alpha. Now change the alpha input black value to a higher number, so that it will have a different look from the previous brush stroke. Check the animation, and this is how it looks. Perfect. Let's move to the next step. Now I am adding the zoom out effect to this whole design. Minimize all layers to get some room. And then create a new null object, and call it motion. Then select all the layers, and then parent all layers with this null. Right now my parent tab is not available here. So right click here, go to the columns, and select parents. Now grab this pick whip, and drop it onto the motion layer. Now all our layers are connected with this motion. 
Instead of adding keyframes on each individual layer, we will use this motion layer for controlling the animation. Select the motion layer, then go to the first frame position, and open scale. Here change the scale value to a lower number. Let's keep the value 93% and then add a keyframe on the scale. Now go to around 3 second position, and change the scale value to a higher number. And this is how the scale looks now. Now select all keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. Open graph editor, and change the curves to something like this. It will make the animation faster in the beginning, and then it will slowly settle down. Check the animation, and this is how it looks. If you want, you can place the last keyframe at different timing, to make the animation a bit slower. Let's adjust the curve, and it will look much better. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how it looks now. This looks good to me. Let's place this brush layer a few frames forward, so that it will appear at a different time. I don't like the starting frame of the background, because the edges are looking brighter. So select this background, and change the scale value to around 60%. And it is looking better. Now I'm going to add some extra depth into the scene. So make a duplicate of this metal texture layer, then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fast box blur. Place it onto the layer, and change the blur radius value to 3. Now change the blend mode to the screen, and the background will start appearing. Let's go to around 3 second position, and then unlink this from the motion layer. The scale animation of this layer is not controlled by this motion layer anymore. Now go to the first frame position, and then open scale. Here add a keyframe on it. Then go to the last keyframe position, and change the scale value to a higher number. Let's go to the first frame position, and change the scale value to the smaller one. Now select both keyframes, and easy ease them as well. Then open the graph editor, and change the curves the same as we have made in the motion layer. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how it looks. I think I need to add some more blur to it. Select this layer, and change the blur radius value to 5. Perfect. Let's do some color adjustment now. Create a new adjustment layer, and place it on top of all layers. Let's call it CC. Then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the curves. Apply it onto the layer, and first, change the channels to red. And then add an S curve on it. Something like this. You can turn on and off this effect to see the changes. Let's change the channels to green, and add another S curve to it. It should be like this. And this is how it looks. Now we are going to make the transition. So go to the end keyframe position, and then create a new solid layer. I am calling it a transition map. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fractal noise. Place it onto the layer, and we are going to use the default setting. Let's hide this map layer, because we don't need to see it. Now select the CC layer once again, and minimize the curves effect to get some room. Again, go to the effects and the presets, and search for the gradient wipe. Place it onto the layer, and then change the gradient layer to the transition map. Make sure to use the effect and mask. Now, we will use the transition completion for animating it. Let's change the transition softness value to 50%. And transition completion value to 0%. Then go to the timing, where you want to make the transition. Let's keep this timing, and then add a keyframe on transition completion. Now go to the 5th second position, 
and change the transition completion value to 100%. Press U to reveal all keyframes, select both keyframes, and easy ease them. Check the animation, and now we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I will see you in the next one. Till then, good luck, and peace.